mom is supposed to take care of you when you're little. She's supposed to hug you when you cry. She's supposed to be the one that bandages your cuts when you fall down. You don't ever really imagine a time when you have to take care of your mother. Hearing the diagnosis of ALS changed everything for me. I first noticed that something was off with my mom when my whole family was out at a wedding in Florida for my brother. And I remember that my mom was slurring her speech a little bit and I thought, well, they're having so much fun without me and she had too many glasses of wine and she's slurring her speech and I remember being so angry that they were off having so much fun and I was stuck at home without them. And that was really the first time that I started to notice that something was, was, was really not quite right. Fast forward about three months, mom's uh, speech was progressively getting worse and worse and people were really having trouble, you know, understanding what she was saying. They had started to work her up for a bunch of different things. They weren't really sure exactly what was going on. Um, you know, so it was very difficult to sort of watch her get poked and prodded through EMG testing and through blood testing and spinal taps. Um, you know, the difficulty with trying to get a diagnosis of something like ALS is there's no real test for it. So you basically have to rule out everything else before you can actually come up with a final diagnosis. So at the time it was, it was a very difficult thing to watch her go through that, that very rigorous battery of testing. It took about a few months for all the tests to, to come in and I remember it was an April day, it was very cloudy and dreary out and I took my mom to the neurologist's office and we were sitting there of course in that you know, stark beige type room waiting for the doctor to come in. Um, and, and the doctor came in and I was sitting there next to mom who of course was dressed completely to the nines because that's how she was, her shoes matched her pocketbook and everything. Um, and so we sat there and the doctor came in and um, basically looked at us and said, well, we have nothing else to tell you except that you've got Lou Gehrig's disease. When the doctor said it was Lou Gehrig's disease, I remember my insides just completely shattering. But on the outside, you had to remain strong. It was almost like in that one instant, all my mom's you know, nurturing and mothering got shot over to me and all of a sudden I had to sort of take over that role. And so we sat there and, and, and mom looked at the doctor and said, you know, but there's no cure for that. And um, the doctor shook his head and said, no, there's not. And so we picked up our stuff and we walked out of the doctor's office and we went to the elevator and pushed the button and you know, not knowing what else to do, we said, well, let's go to lunch. You know, what, what else do you do when, you know, you, you hear your mom get a diagnosis of, of a disease that you know is, is, is fatal and has a life expectancy of about two to five years. You go to lunch. <laughs> Within about six months, uh, mom had completely lost the ability to swallow, so she had a feeding tube put in, and, and once she had the feeding tube put in, she did pretty well for a little bit. Um, within about a year of her diagnosis, she had pretty much lost the ability also to, to speak. Most people couldn't understand her, so she walked around carrying a notebook and a, a, a pen and would write down everything she wanted to say. Um, it's a devastating disease because what it does is it strips you of all your capabilities for your muscle functions but at the same time it leaves your brain completely intact so you know exactly what's happening as your muscles start to sort of deteriorate one by one. Um, something that I, you know, I witnessed as a bystander but I can't imagine you know, having to really live through something like that. Watching your mom wither away piece by piece is really something that's very devastating. Um, watching someone really just lose the capability of breathing altogether is something that no one should ever really have to watch. Um, Mom eventually passed away on Valentine's Day um, and she was only 62. I can only hope that my kids will, will live in a world that's free of ALS and that no one else really has to suffer the way that my mother did.